So let's look at what we do once we have a proper rational function to deal with. How do we do the decomposition? How do we figure out um, how to write it as a sum of some simpler terms? So given a rational function, what are the steps that we need to follow? So given some polynomial divided by a polynomial, our first step is determine if it's proper or, imp or improper. And if it's improper, do long division. Okay, most of the time we're gonna have examples where we have a proper rational function, but occasionally you'll see one that's improper. So what do we do next? If it is proper, the first step is going to be to factor the denominator. Notice that I factored the denominator in that initial example. So we need to factor our denominator as much as we possibly can. Okay, It's always possible to factor a polynomial into some products of um, linear terms and quadratic terms. So that means terms um, of the first degree, x plus something, 2x plus something, um, and terms with x squared in them. Okay, So we can always factor our polynomial into some product of those kinds of terms. Once we've done the factoring, this is going to determine the form, what our, what our um, decomposition is going to look like. So there's going to be four different forms that we could have depending on the kinds of products that we see in the denominator after factoring. So we want to determine the form of the proper rational function. So what are these four different forms? Well, the first one we call the simple linear form. And we'll have this type when I have a um, product in my, my denominator that's something like x plus 1, if I have that sort of term. If I have um, repeated linear terms, we'll be using the repeated linear form. So that would be if I had something like x plus 1 squared up here in the factored denominator. So I have two different types of um, linear terms, linear forms that I could have, just a single linear term or a repeated linear term. Then I have something called the irreducible quadratic form. And irreducible just means the quadratic can't be factored. And the quadratic can't be factored in the case that um, in the quadratic formula, the part under the square root would be negative. Let's say b squared minus 4ac would be negative. Okay. So something that would be an example of an irreducible quadratic type term would be something like x squared plus 1. Okay. We can't factor that any further. And then the last one, if you kind of follow the pattern here, would be a repeated irreducible quadratic. Okay, so this would be something like x squared plus 1 squared. Okay. So to go over our steps again, given a rational function, we're determining if it's proper or improper. If it's improper, we're going to do long division. Um, once we have a proper part, or if we originally had a proper part, we're going to factor the denominator of that rational function as much as we possibly can. And then we're going to identify the types of terms that we have in, in our um, factored denominator. Do we, do we have um, linear terms, repeated linear terms, quadratic terms, repeated quadratic terms? Once we've, we've done that, that'll determine um, how we can write our um, rational function as a sum of some simpler pieces with some unknown constants. So the last part here would be to solve for the constants needed. Okay. But for the rest of this video, we're going to focus on what these forms are. So we'll look at several examples of each of these types of um, terms. So for the first one, we have the simple linear case. So here's an example. I have a function that's a rational function equal to 3 over x cubed minus x squared um, minus 12x. This is in fact proper. I have degree zero in the numerator and degree three in the denominator. 
I have degree zero because this is like three times x to the zero, x to the zero is one. So it is proper, so I can go ahead and do the step of factoring. So I write this as 3 over x times x squared uh, minus x minus 12. Okay, that's not completely factored yet. So this will be 3 over x times x minus 4 times x plus 3. Okay, so you may need to review some of your techniques for factoring um, for this section since that will be an important first step in these, the problems that we're going to be doing. So looking at these terms, okay, all of these um, terms in the factored denominator are what we call simple linear. Okay, and this is similar to the um, initial example that we started with. That was a case where the denominator factored into all simple linear terms. And in that case, the form will involve some unknown constant a over x plus an unknown constant b over x minus 4 plus an unknown constant c over x plus 3. So whenever you have a simple linear term, the breakdown is going to involve putting just a constant over that um, simple linear term. Okay. So what about what we're going to do for a repeated linear case? So here I have a function where I have x squared um, minus 5x plus 16 all over 2x plus 1 times x minus 2 squared. Okay, this is already factored for us, so I just want to identify the types of terms that I have. This first term of 2x plus 1 is a simple linear term. And this second term here, I have x minus 2, that's linear, but it's being squared, raised to some power. So that's a repeated linear term. Okay, so we're seeing now a combination of different types of, of terms together, so that's going to affect the form that I have. The simple linear term is going to follow the um, simple linear form, so that'll be some unknown number over that linear piece. So we'll have a over 2x plus 1. So how do I handle the repeated linear term? Well, the decomposition that goes with, with that will be some unknown number b over x minus 2 plus some unknown, uh, unknown number c over x minus 2 squared. Okay, so these two pieces go with the repeated linear. Okay. But notice I have as many terms in my sum as I had um, products here in my denominator. So I have 2x plus 1 times x minus 2 times x minus 2. That gave me three separate terms. It, but with the repeated linear, I don't just have b over x minus 2, c over x minus 2. I have b over x minus 2, c over x minus 2 squared. Okay, so let's look at another example with a repeated linear um, type case. So here I have x plus 2 over x squared times x plus 1 cubed times 2x plus 3. So it's all nicely flat, um, factored for us. This is proper. I have degree 1 in the numerator. The denominator here is actually degree 2 plus 3 plus 1, so it's actually degree 6 in the denominator, so it's definitely proper. So I can go ahead and look at breaking this down into the sum of the, the simpler pieces following what types of forms that I have here. So what are these different pieces? Well, x squared, you might think, well, can that be uh, quadratic or is that actually linear? We'll call x squared a repeated linear because you have x and then you're squaring it. x plus 1 cubed, that's also repeated linear. And then this 2x plus 3 here is just the simple linear. Okay, so how can we rewrite this? Well, the repeated linear with um, x squared will be some unknown number a over x plus some number um, b over x squared. Okay, so remember I need those two terms to be associated with my repeated linear term. For x plus 1 cubed, I'll again have three terms, just starting with the... Um, linear by itself and then an increasing power. So I'll have c over x plus 1 plus d over x plus 1 squared plus e over x plus 1 cubed. Okay, And then for that last term, simple linear, just some number f here over 2x plus 3. 
So that's my decomposition. So we're not going into the, the theory of, of why these decomposition works. So I'm just letting you um, trust me that, that these, these decompositions um, are correct and we will be able to do algebra to figure out what these unknowns are that makes this right hand side equal to the left hand side. Okay, so let's look at those last two cases. We've got the irreducible quadratic case next. So again, this is definitely proper. I have degree zero here over degree three. And what are the types of terms that I have? Well, this x minus one would be a simple linear term. And this x squared plus nine is an irreducible quadratic because I can't factor it any further. Notice that if I computed b squared minus four ac, b here in the ax squared plus bx plus c, um, standard form would be 0, a is 1, and c is 9. So this ends up being negative 36, which is um, definitely less than 0. And so I, I could, I'd have a negative number under my square root in the quadratic formula. I can't factor that any further. Okay, so let's look at the form. With the simple linear, I'll have an a over x minus 1. Now what's new here is that I have a quadratic type term instead of a linear or repeated linear. So instead of having just a constant in the numerator over x squared plus 9, I'm going to have a linear type thing. So it'll be like, like mx plus b, but here I'll use the letters bx plus c. So I have a over x minus 1 plus bx plus c over x squared plus 9. I also want to note that the order of these, these terms doesn't matter. I could have also chosen to write this as something like um, ax plus b over x squared plus 9 plus c over x minus 1. Um, what matters is just the, the type of, of form that we have. So I want to make sure that I have a, a linear um, kind of term divided by my quadratic term and a constant term divided by my linear term. Okay, so let's look at one more example with these irreducible quadratics before we get to our last form. So here I have a rational function that's 3 plus x over x squared times 2x squared minus x minus 1. So this is again proper. I have degree 1 in the numerator and degree 4 in the denominator. So what are the types of pieces that I have? Well this x squared we know is our repeated linear. And then we want to ask ourselves, is this quadratic of 2x squared minus x minus 1 um, fully factored or not? So this is quadratic, but can we factor it? So you could do a quick check of the b squared minus 4ac and see that b squared would be negative 1 squared minus 4 times 2 times negative 1. And notice that that's going to be 1 plus plus. Um, 8 or 9. So that's a positive number. It's actually a perfect square. So we can factor this nicely. So we'll go ahead and give that a try. So we have 3 plus x over x squared. Then I'll have a product of some linear terms. So it turns out this factors into 2x plus 1 and x minus 1. We can check that. I'm going to get 2x squared plus x minus 2x. That'll give me that negative x for the middle term and then minus 1. Okay. So this was, um, in fact, a reducible quadratic. So we needed to factor that first. This here as my repeated linear term. And these here are both simple linear. Okay, so this is just illustrating that you want to be careful just because you're given a quadratic, don't automatically assume it's an irreducible quadratic. Try to um, determine if you can factor it or not first. So notice this will be some a over x plus b over x squared plus c over 2x plus 1 plus d over x minus 1. Okay, It would not be correct to say that the form is a over x plus b over x squared plus cx plus d over um, 2x squared minus x minus 1. So that would not be the decomposition. We have to fully uh, make sure our denominator is factored before writing down our decomposition. Okay, so let's look at that last form now, the repeated irreducible quadratic. So again, I notice this is proper. I've got degree zero on the top, 
this x squared, when I squared it, would become x to the fourth times an x, makes that denominator end up with a degree of 5. Okay, so what are the types of terms that I have here? Well, x is definitely a simple linear. x squared plus 4 is just like x squared plus 1 and x squared plus 9. Those are things that we're not going to be able to, um, excuse me, factor any further, but I do have the squared on it. So this term is my repeated irreducible quadratic. So when we go to write the form here, we're going to have some number a over x plus two terms here for the repeated irreducible quadratic, just like we had two terms for the um, repeated simple linear when I had something to the, the second power there. So I'll have denominators here of x squared plus 4 and x squared plus 4 squared, but the numerators that go with each of these two will be the, the linear type form. So this will be bx plus c and dx plus e. Okay, so we have a over x plus bx plus c over x squared plus 4 plus dx plus e over x squared plus 4 squared for this form. So let's see how we can write out some forms for a couple of examples here. Um, I encourage you to pause the video at this point and try to write out the forms for each of these two yourself um, and then go back and, and watch my um, solution to each of these. So notice that um, in both of these cases I do have proper um, rational functions. The first one here is degree 4 over degree 5 and the second one is degree 1 also over degree 5. So they are both proper. We want to see if these um, are completely factored before I go to write down the form. So what about this x squared minus x plus 1? So I can do a little check with my b squared minus 4ac. So my b is negative 1, so I have negative 1 squared minus 4 times 1 times 1. That'll be 1 minus 4, or negative 3. So this second one is irreducible. It can't be factored anymore. And this first term here is a repeated linear. So when we go to write down our forms, we're going to have a over x plus 3 plus b over x plus 3 squared plus c over x plus 3 cubed. That takes care of our repeated linear um, decomposition. And then I will also have for my last term here dx plus e all over x squared minus x plus 1. Okay. So what about for this second example? Well, notice this is a fourth degree, so I'm going to have to factor that further to get started. Looks like I can factor this into x squared plus 2 times x squared plus 2. Notice that gives me x to the fourth plus 4x squared plus 4. So in fact, this means I have x squared plus 2 squared here. Remember, we can always factor polynomials into products of linear things and quadratic things. Notice this leaves us with a simple linear term and a repeated irreducible quadratic. So we're going to have some a over x minus 1 plus bx plus c over x squared plus 2 plus dx plus e over x squared plus 2 squared. Okay, so we've been focusing on these different forms in this video. Future videos will talk about how to solve for these um, constants, A, B, C, D, etc. And then how we can use these decompositions to actually evaluate some integrals.